Well, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council Members. It's a pleasure to be back here before you. It was only 32 years ago that I was standing before the Council. I think that was a few of your predecessors ago. Um, my wife and I are connected to Irvine. Then Captain Umberg and I moved to Irvine shortly after the first time we left the Army. It's a good place to live. It's a wonderful place to do business. My business is located here in Irvine. Um, and you may be wondering why a state legislator whose district does not include Irvine would be here talking to you about an Irvine land use decision. Uh, my district is close, close enough that somebody with a spaghetti arm like myself could throw a stone from my district to Irvine. But this is a decision that affects not just Irvine, it affects the region, it affects Southern California. It affects the taxpayers of the state of California because ultimately it will be taxpayers in whole or in part that will be paying for the cemetery. This is a decision that affects many, many, many lives. Uh, congratulations to Irvine for their dedication and their commitment to veterans and a veteran cemetery. And that commitment was evidenced five years ago when you supported a site to allow veterans a final place to rest. That was the artist site. That was a site that was studied. That was a site that was approved both by CalVet and by the Federal Veterans Administration. And following that approval, there was another site, the Strawberry Field site. In fact, the uh, Strawberry Field site was supported by my wife, who's here, now retired Brigadier General Umberg. She supported that site and campaigned for it. It didn't happen. It was rejected by the voters here in Irvine. And then there was another proposal. That, I'll call that golf course site number one. Golf course site number one was proposed, and that golf course site was in existence all the way up to and including the Veterans Committee hearing where I watched and sat just last month. Golf course site number one included what looked like a coyote eating a ball. But had anybody asked CalVet or the Federal Veterans Administration whether that would ever be approved, they would have been told immediately the answer is no. It would not have been approved, and it could not have been approved. Uh, there was another foray to create a cemetery in Anaheim. That's not a veteran's cemetery. A portion of it might be dedicated to veterans, but it's not a veteran's cemetery. And then golf course site number two, which has been extant now for maybe three weeks. Golf course site number two is different, very different than golf course site number one. And golf course site number two has not gone through the process, has not gone through transportation committee, nor has it gone, excuse me, commission, nor has it gone through the planning commission. A couple of corrections. Um, one is the $10 million with respect to golf course site, whether it's one or two, I do not know. But let's assume it's golf course site number two. That $10 million is contingent upon federal VA approval. There's been no submission to the federal Senator, VA. Senator, your time's yeah. up. Will you finish up, please? Uh, yes, Sorry. I will. Thank Everybody you. Everybody has three minutes. Yes, and no, I, I appreciate that, Madam Mayor. Stop um, the same thing the with respect to the numbers, as Council Member Fox pointed out, apples to apples would be a closer, closer comparison. Let me just say that no cemetery will be you built You may close your without... comments. Shh. Yeah, please, you need, okay. you, need to, you need to finish up. I will finish up, Madam. Please, thank you. So, there would be no cemetery approved without either the council's approval or the citizen's approval. State legislature can't build a cemetery here. It will be up to the Irvine representatives or the citizens. Let me just conclude by saying no, okay, thank you. I'm sorry, your time's up. Okay. You, you've got... Let me, let me oh, just let me conclude interrupt. with one paragraph. No, one I'm paragraph. sorry, your time's up. Thank you. Madam, Madam Mayor, no, no, one... Madam Mayor, I move to recess. Okay, so if we have to close down the media, are you, we're going... We're going to follow the three-minute rule, right. whether you like it or not. You're our guest. I appreciate you're here. So, let me, let me, let me, Madam Mayor. Okay, let I'm me, going Madam to Mayor, recess I move the meeting. To recess. We're recessing the uh, right. meeting for 10 minutes. I, I want to underline one of your points, Madam Mayor. Wait, wait. Let him speak.
too much back and forth concerning personalities that's infected this debate. And what I wanted to say, had I had an opportunity, I would have quoted my favorite Republican president. What I would have said is, I would have said that Abraham Lincoln said, we've come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who gave their lives that the nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper we should do this. But in the larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men and women, and women, living and dead who struggle, have consecrated far above our poor power to add or detract. So we should keep that in mind when we're debating and discussing this issue. It is, it is, it is important that we recognize the mission we're all about, and that is providing a place Where's the sergeant of arms? Do we have a sergeant of arms? Yay! Thank you! No! Senator! Mr. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. I didn't expect to speak, but the person that said we need to listen to veterans made me feel like I needed to speak. I'm uh, Robin Umberg. I'm a soldier, always will be a soldier, retired Army, 36 years, uh, Brigadier General. And uh, in the past, I was undersecretary at California Department of Veteran Affairs. And I happen to be married to Senator Umberg. And so I want you to know that I am not here because of Senator Umber. We've been married so long, I think we disagree more than we agree. <laughs> That's good news. Good. <laughs> um, one of my last assignments as a general officer was to preside over funerals west of the Mississippi. And so this is very dear to my heart, and I write to those children of those funerals every year and will for the rest of my life to remind them that their loved one isn't forgotten. I believe there are good people on both sides. I love Nick, I love Bill Cook, and nothing they do is gonna change that. But I also share a concern. Um, the golf course site that you're proposing is two weeks young. And I really, I'm afraid it doesn't make sense to me. When you talk about uh, live fire around schools, you're talking three volleys. And if my children were in a school that from a distance they would hear three volleys and know that another veteran just went to heaven, I would think it was great. Um, when we talk about, look at all the money that should be going to live veterans if the artist site is more expensive. And I've heard fibs on both sides. Um, so if, if it's more expensive, that money should go to live veterans. Anybody that's worked within the state knows that's not how the general fund works. It doesn't work that way. And in fact, there are so many resources uh, for our veterans. The biggest problem is cracking the code on how to getting them designated. Uh, for, their, for the help to get the resources that they need. But my training and my knowledge has taught me that after we lost the Strawberry Field site, it, is, it feels like dereliction of duty to say that we are not gonna go with the only site, the only site that has federal pre-approval and the federal folks will tell you that once you get on that priority list with the pre-approval, they're gonna work with you to, to make it happen. Yes, they may be 70 on the list, but they're number one on the list for a vet, veteran cemetery in California. So, um, I don't expect to change any minds. I think I know how Thank the vote's you. gonna go. I think all of us know how it's gonna go. So most of California veterans are over 60 years old in spite of Iraq and Iran. There is an urgency. Thank I, you. I Thank you. you. Your time's up. Thank you so much. Uh, Richard Allegre. Um, Mayor, council members, I urge you to move forward with the expeditious transfer of the city's 125 acre artist site. So the state of California can quickly begin building and operating 
a beautiful veterans cemetery at no cost to the city of Irvine. Five years ago, in 2014, the City Council adopted historic resolutions that enabled Orange County Assemblywoman Sharon Quirk Silva to win approval of Assembly Bill 1453. AB 1453 designated the city-owned Arda site as the ideal venue for the state-built Southern California Veterans Cemetery. A subsequent $500,000 study of the Arda site resulted in this outstanding plan for our Veterans Memorial Park and Cemetery. In 2016, the plan was approved by both CalVet and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Then, in June 2018, Irvine voters reaffirmed their support for the artist site by rejecting Measure B, a council rezoning scheme to replace the planned veteran cemetery at the artist site with massive five-point development projects. Recognizing the mandate of the 63% no on B vote, Assemblywoman Sharon Quirk Silva introduced legislation this year, AB 368, again directing CalVet to acquire the artist site from the city to start building the veteran cemetery. The state budget provides $24.5 million for first year construction. AB 368 was adopted by the Assembly in May and is now moving through the State Senate with strong support from Irvine citizens. So here's the question. How much more do we citizens have to do to get our City Council to respect the will of the people? Must Irvine voters go to the ballot box yet again, this time with our own initiative that would directly command the city to transfer the artist site to the state, it shouldn't have to come to that. Please, do the right thing. Heed the will of the people. Respect the will of the people. Thank you very much, and thank you for staying within your three minutes. Harvey Liss. Welcome. Thank you. Can we have the slide number two? My slideshow. Thank you. I'm Harvey Liss, a 43-year resident of Irvine, former planning commissioner, and a California licensed professional civil engineer. In fact, I was project engineer for the village of Woodbridge, where I live. There are lots of experts here. Uh, Mayor Shea has proposed several golf course sites. This map from the city shows the odd-shaped 125-acre golf course dated October 2018. Next slide, please. On the left side, shows a brand new golf course site on the left side, and that first appeared in the Finance Commission staff report July 6th. So for which golf course are all those commission recommendations in the staff report? Obviously, all those recommendations are invalid. They're for a very, very different site. Next slide, please. This is an email that Mayor Shea has been sending out claiming we cannot transfer the artist site to the state as we don't have $92 million to construct it. Uh, skip slide five. Next slide, please. Skip this one. This shows the current so estimate. You don't from... need to skip it if you need to go back because the staff already answered that question, so you're welcome to show it. No, no, that's, that's fine. I don't want to take up any more time. Uh, this is the latest Department of General Services estimate uh, comparing the current uh, golf course. Uh, this is $62.7 million, published July 1st, and construction duration is 30 months. Uh, next slide, please. Now, where does it say that the city or the state or anyone else has to come up with the full cost of construction? Why would the state refuse such a valuable parcel for a veteran cemetery, especially when it's free? Next slide, please. Regarding ri uh, rifle uh, volleys, this is a map that shows all of the rifle volleys are going to occur at the assembly area. That's where all of the funeral uh, uh, celebrations will, or memorial services will be held. It is 1,700 feet from Cadence Park School. As you see, 2,200 feet from the nearest building of Portola High School. Plus, there are going to be 
a massive far, a forest of trees around it, plus a berm. If they hear anything at all, it's not going to be very loud, probably very insignificant, and probably from inside the buildings, they won't hear it at all. So being uh, across the street is absolutely meaningless on this enormous 125-acre artisite. Next slide, please. Contamination has been spread around as if it's a contaminated site. No, the artisite is not contaminated as far as is known. Some buildings have asbestos, and some soil around lead roof buildings are contaminated by, uh, by rain runoff. That's all been considered by CalVet. If you want to find real contamination, you've got to go 15 feet down to find volatile organic compounds. To do surface turnover, it means nothing. It means there are no pesticides or insecticides. Next slide. And here is this 333-page concept plan that's been presented before. No other proposed site has the study. Please, I want to introduce Pat Fusco, a renowned civil engineer in Southern California, the founder and CEO of Fusco Engineering, a 200-person civil engineering firm based in, Cali uh, in Irvine. Th thank you. Thank uh, you. Uh, Ms. Rose, I know. Um, Bagani? Thank you, Mayor Shea and Council people. I'm Pat Fusco. I live in Newport Beach, but I'm the CEO and founder of a 200-person engineering firm based here in Irvine for the last 40 years. We do a lot of work in land development, construction, and believe it or not, cemeteries. So I have some experience with this sort of project, and I was asked to compare these sites and basically make a list of pluses and minuses. So I'm going to share what I found with you. There's 12 areas that I compared them with, I'm sorry, can you hear me? I can hear you. Have Slide, problem. yes, we thanks. So the 12 areas I compared them in, um, of the 12, two, I found them comparable, similar, or equal. And that is internal circulation, the ability to put roads around inside of it, and the traffic impacts. The other 10, they're different. The first one is shape. The, the golf course site I evaluated was the previous one that was basically, I'm sorry to say, grotesque in shape and almost unusable. Now it's been made to be comparable to the artisite. However, I just want to make a footnote that it's taking 30 or 40 acres of the cultural terrace and lake from our great park to do so, nice square flat land, and in return giving the park back that grotesque area. I'll leave that as a footnote. So back to the areas, they're different. Bring up infrastructure is what we call it, sewer, water, storm drains, power, everything you need to, to live and breathe. And it's a little more difficult on what's now called the golf course or what I call the cultural terrace site because the, um, most sites need two ways in and out. If you go to the east, you have to cross Agua Shannon. That means a bridge. Most, I just did the Marine Way bridge for Broadcom. It was $23 million just for one bridge. So you're looking at one or two bridges for your infrastructure on that golf terrace site. So FAA, the VOR antenna is pretty much proximate to both sites, but I think closer to the golf site. The next area is the CEQA process. The artist site is further along. So if you choose the cultural terrace golf site, you have one more year extra for CEQA. And by my estimation, another year of preliminary design to catch up with the artist site. The next area I compared them is demolition. Now, sure, you've heard tonight, I heard adjectives like significant uh, from staff, but that's not exactly the case. Demolition, sure, it's more on the artist site, less on the cultural terrace. However, I had three, three certified National Association of Demolition Contractors go to the site and give me wet sign bids to tear down the buildings. They found there are 33 structures, not 77, and only 24 are actually buildings. So it was two and a half million bucks in 120 days. So put that, write that down, remember it. That's all it takes to clear the site. Now, if you want the runway out, it's eight Mr. more Fusco, million. Mr. Fusco, your time yes. is up. So if oh, you close up, please, sorry. thank you. Thank you. The time to completion for the artist site, one to two years, the other site, three to five. And good evening. I'm Barbara Parker Fox. I live in uh, Lake Forest, just a few minutes from the Great Park property. And I've worked in Irvine for the past 18 years at Fusco Engineering. I'm here to present a video, the 3D modeled video that we prepared to show you um, just how lovely and respectful the Veterans Cemetery and Memorial Garden will be 
for on the Arda site. Um, please show the video now. It was 77 years ago that El Toro Marine Corps Air Station began. Since then, over 200,000 Marines and pilots were trained or deployed here. Many died in combat. What better way to respect and remember them than to build our Veterans Cemetery here? The proposed Veterans Memorial Park and Cemetery is well located on the Arda site with safe, easy access and needed infrastructure at its front door. It's a compatible use for the remainder of the Orange County Great Park, and it has state approval and funding making it ready to go. The vision for this cemetery includes restoration and use of the original control tower and the very first flight line at El Toro Marine Corps Air Station, including the first two aircraft hangars built here. This presents a great opportunity to create an air museum for visitor education and enjoyment. It also preserves the remaining runway which is long enough to land Corsairs and Hellcats, the workhorse airplanes of World War II, and save $8 million in removal costs, enough to pay for the restoration. The cemetery would also be anchored by beautiful memorial gardens and plazas for visitors to continue learning about our heroes. These features have proven to be very popular and rewarding experiences. Successful examples are the World War II Memorial Plaza in Washington, D.C., or even the Memorial Gardens at Normandy Beach. Finally, the cemetery will have a 2.5 mile long perimeter trail that can enhance the visitor's experience and provide connectivity to the community and the future Great Park. It will include a landscape screening berm along existing neighborhoods for privacy. The last base commander, Colonel Stephen Mugg, said as he closed the base, El Toro will change, but it will continue to serve Orange County in a new way. Let's be sure his dream comes true. The Veterans Memorial Gardens and Cemetery will not only make a peaceful, educational, and pastoral place for our citizens, but will also serve as a way to say goodbye and preserve the legacy of so many of our fallen heroes. So Ron Fox, what's your face? Yeah, I do. Oh, hi. Hi there. Um, Mayor and council members, uh, I have no detailed prepared remarks, uh, uh, but thanks for your attention. Uh, I came here to, to voice my support for uh, council members Fox's proposal to, to uh, uh, immediately start construction on the AODA site. Um, and uh, you know, and I, I, I want to thank you all for your service. You are public servants, but the real heroes in this room are the veterans that are here that served our country and fought for our country, and their families who have supported them, and especially um, um, those that didn't make it back uh, when they left El Toro. And we really need to um, we need we really need to honor those veterans the most, right? with this cemetery on the El Toro base in the heart of it at the ARDA site. So I wanted to just point out, um, why is it that we're considering a golf course site that was just like two months old? It's been changed numerous times. Um, and it was revealed by our own mayor two, uh, five days ago on July 18th at a town hall. She said that the golf course site's proposal was quote, a diversion tactic. And our veterans deserve it wasn't, it wasn't a better than that. Tactic. No, it is not. It's on video. Oh, well. um, so I'd love to, uh, I, I would love to have this council not support a diversion tactic. Our veterans deserve better. Our community deserves better. Orange County deserves better. Southern California deserves better. So please uh, support the fastest way to do it irrespective of cost, 
to, to fight for our veterans because of what they've done for us. Thank you. Richard Allegre, Allegre. Would you stop it? I said it was an alternative, and you can't be in some private meeting videotaping people. Is that how low you people go? It's ridiculous. Just stop, please, right now. That was a private meeting, and no one had a right to be in there infiltrating the meeting with a video camera. So rude. Ron Fath or Foth? Thank you. Thank you. I didn't say that. It was, a, it was an alternative site. Okay, so we need to control the meeting. We're not going to sit here and debate what was going on in some private meeting. Um, so I've called up uh, Richard. Want to curtail by our vote on, on Tuesday that we do not get a, a approved um, artist cemetery by the state. That's what we need to do, and that's what we're going to have to do. Okay, my idea that I've been working on since 2016 to stop what Larry does is to pro propose an alternative site, and that's what we're doing. So by approving it on Tuesday, it from a short-term perspective. It stops the artist site from being designated by the state by the end of September. I think that was our point, is that we need to create and approve another site. Because if we don't do that, we are going to get the state coming in, and that artist site is going to be a cemetery. You'll have no choice. That's what students. So this was the diversion, in a way, tactic. So I thought just switching the golf course was the best idea. And they get a commercial site. And then what we do is we go out for an RFQ. We go out to the development community and we negotiate with them to come in, clean up the land, and we give them a 99-year lease. The golf course site is the short-term solution. Then I think that we sit down, we have more community meetings, we can talk about all kinds of opportunities, especially if we could get the strawberry site and you know reverse the swap. I would have to have an attorney help us figure that out. But that, that to me, is the best choice of all. And then Pat Strader, I just saw your card. Good evening, Mayor Shea and uh, council members. My name is Stephen Berger. Uh, I had some prepared comments, but Larry Agron and Harvey Liss did the history of some of the Veterans Cemetery. My impression as a voter citizen and resident of Irvine for the last 40 years was that in 2014, we were promised a Veterans Cemetery at the Orta site. There was no controversy that I knew about. It was an approved site. I understand there's a 333-page concept plan. It was approved by CalVet and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. And everything was on track, so we were going to have our Veterans Cemetery, the initial phase, by this Veterans Day, November 11, 2019, until October 2017 with the land swap. And then all of a sudden, the artist site was killed, Strawberry Fields came into play, and the artist site was to be developed by Five Point. That was rejected on June 5, 2018. And I was one of the voters of the 63% that rejected the land swap scheme. And Mr. Marta Carino, with all due respect to you and Mr. Melching, I've been a practicing lawyer for 46 years. I know legal mumbo jumbo when I see it. I was one of those voters on June 5, 2018, and my vote was yes to the artist site, no to Strawberry Fields. That was my vote. And I asked this council to listen to the voters and respect the voters. That's the least you can do, is respect us and respect what we say. And I want to know from this council, I see on this supplemental agenda, I see right here, golf course site, recommend golf course site. Four paragraphs, recommend golf course site. What about the order site? Has anyone on city staff, has anyone on the council talked to Pat Fusco? That was a pretty impressive uh, video that I saw and a pretty impressive presentation. Isn't the order site further along way more 
than either of the golf course sites. And why was the golf course site changed? It went from 125 acres to 100 acres. And it's a different configuration. Why was that changed? How about we have an explanation about that? And which side are we talking about? I, for one, have had enough of the any site but the artist site. And what really bothers me is the dishonesty. There is one reason for the any site but the artist site momentum here. And that is that Five Point wants to develop the artist site. Five Point wants to develop the artist site, so we can't, so we can't have a cemetery there. I don't like that. If you want to be honest about it, be honest about it, and tell us what's really going on. I ask please be this quiet. Council, I ask please this council let him speak. To prove me wrong. Don't vote four to one or three to two for the golf course site. Vote for the artist site. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. Okay. We have a motion and second. Let's please vote. This is the great park. Motion carries four to one. Member Fox opposed.